Ni hao. Thank you for inviting me to participate in your meeting today. I'm going to tell you about my discovery of nitric oxide and how it's become a very important signaling molecule in many, many systems. Our earliest publications with nitric oxide were in the, in the 19, late 1970s. Today, I checked PubMed and there are now 190,000 publications dealing with nitric oxide. There was a time I could read all the papers and keep up with the field, but it's now impossible with 10 or 15,000 publications each year. I'm going to tell you how we discovered nitric oxide and some of the interesting clinical and biological effects that it has. We know today that many of the cells in our body communicate with each other. And they communicate with each other by producing signaling molecules. For example, if it's a neuronal cell, we call these signaling molecules neurotransmitters. If the, if the tissue is an endocrine organ, we call these signaling molecules hormones. If they're endothelial cells, blood cells, lymphocytes, we call them autocoids, growth factors. These molecules are released from the cell <coughs> and want to interact with a target cell, with cell type 2 here. What it does is the molecule, the signaling molecule, in a three-dimensional conformational fit, plugs into a protein, usually on the surface of that target cell, and we call that protein a receptor. They are stereospecific interactions. And these interactions with the messenger and its receptor on the cell results in the production and accumulation of an intracellular second messenger. The first such second messenger discovered was in 1957 by my advisor, Earl Sutherland, and his collaborator, Ted Rall. At that point, I was an MD, PhD student at the Western Reserve University in Cleveland. The first messenger was cyclic AMP, and then along came calcium. Then came cyclic GMP, the acosinoids, the prostaglandins. So while there are dozens and dozens and dozens of the first messengers, there are only a small number of six or seven intracellular second messengers. And it's these six second messengers that regulate the biology of the cell. For example, in this cell, what they do is they produce nitric oxide. The nitric oxide can have effects within the cell in which it's made, but it also can come out and regulate other cells in the body. And I'll tell you more about that with nitric oxide. But the biological effects of nitric oxide are usually mediated by the production of cyclic guanosine monophosphate, another messenger molecule, a cyclic nucleotide. The first such cyclic nucleotide was cyclic AMP in 1957, and in the late 1960s, cyclic GMP was discovered. Cyclic GMP is produced from GTP, guanosine triphosphate, by an enzyme called guanylcyclase. And there's seven different isoforms, seven different gene products to make this, these isomers of guanylcyclase. It's the soluble isoform of guanylate cyclase found in many tissues that is the receptor for nitric oxide. The particulate isoforms of guanylate cyclase are regulated by other hormones and messengers, the atriopeptins, E. coli enterotoxin, et cetera. When cyclic GMP is generated, it can be hydrolyzed and inactivated by a family of enzymes called cyclic nucleotide phosphodiesterases. These phosphodiesterases, there are about 10 different isoforms, and they can be regulated by a variety of drugs that we know that are often traditional Chinese medicines, caffeine, theophylline, theobromine, and they led to the discovery of Viagra, which inhibits one of the isoforms that degrades cyclic GMP in the penis. The cyclic GMP will activate a protein kinase, and there are many protein kinases, these enzymes transfer the terminal phosphate from ATP to a protein substrate. And there are about 150 different isoforms of protein kinase. 
And when these proteins are phosphorylated, the enzymatic activity can be increased or it can be decreased. This results then in a biological effect in that cell and in those tissues. This is a summary of a blood vessel, a cartoon. On the left-hand side of this slide is the endothelium. It's a one cell thick layer in all of our blood vessels, all of our arteries, all of our veins, there's an endothelial lining. And if you add up all the endothelial cells in the body, it's a very large organ, as much as big as your brain or your liver or your heart. This is the receptor <coughs> for various molecules that regulate the production of what Furchgott called endothelial derived relaxing factor, EDRF, which we know today is nitric oxide. On the right hand side of the slide is the smooth muscle layer in the wall of that blood vessel. And they are, regula they are also regulated, these smooth muscle cells, by nitric oxide. And these agents come from nitrovasodilators nitroglycerin, nitroprusside, and other agents that are used therapeutically to treat patients with heart attacks. So the nitric oxide activates the soluble isoform aguanolate cyclase to make cyclic GMP. The cyclic GMP regulates the activity of a cyclic nucleotide kinase, which phosphorylates proteins, and these proteins can phosphorylate myosin. When myosin is phosphorylated, the myosin actin filaments aggregate, you get contraction. Cyclic GMP lowers calcium in the cell, and calcium is required for the activity of the myosin light chain kinase. So with decreased calcium, the, the, the myosin is no longer phosphorylated, it's dephosphorylated, resulting in relaxation. The filaments actin myosin slide apart, you have relaxation. And as I said, there are particulate isoforms of guanolate cyclase that have been interesting. They're regulated by atriopeptins. They're regulated by some of the bacterial toxins uh, to produce diarrhea. There are three different isoforms of nitric oxide synthase to produce nitric oxide. <coughs> the substrate for the enzyme is L-arginine, but the enzyme requires a number of cofactors. These are enzyme helpers. They require NADPH, oxygen, tetrahydrobiopterin, NADPH. These enzymes then convert L-arginine to an intermediate nitrohydroxyarginine, nitro -hydro which is then converted to citrulline and nitric oxide. This is the stick figure reaction. On the left is the arginine, which is a semi-essential amino acid. Our body makes some, but we don't make enough, so we need it in our diet. The cofactors activate the enzyme nitric oxide synthase to produce an intermediate hydroxy arginine. This is further oxidized to form citrulline and nitric oxide. So let me, let me put this story together for you now. <coughs> Various hormones and other ligands, growth factors, hormones, neurotransmitters, interact with their receptor, and in the presence of these reduced cofactors, the enzyme nitric oxide synthase converts arginine to nitric oxide. The nitric oxide activates the soluble isoform guanolate cyclase to make cyclic GMP. The cyclic GMP can be inactivated by a phosphodiesterase, or it can activate a protein kinase to produce a biological effect. And each step in this pathway, one can find molecules that activate the activity or inhibit the activity, and that's how we discover drugs. <coughs> There's a disorder called endothelial dysfunction. People with hypertension, diabetes, atherosclerosis, and to tobacco use have blood vessels that don't make enough nitric oxide. They have increased production of another arginine analog, dimethyl arginine, which is a competitive inhibitor for L-arginine binding to the catalytic site of nitric oxide synthase. It, it, the, in, in endothelial dysfunction, there are increased reactive oxygen species. 
there are decreased cofactors that are oxidized. There's decreased NOS activity. Because of these biological and biochemical effects, this has led to nutritional supplements to treat these disorders. Dis nutri nutritional supplements containing L-arginine and a variety of antioxidants to keep the cofactors in the reduced state. The nitric oxide that is produced, producing cyclic GMP, has a variety of biological effects. It plays a role in neurotransmission for memory. It plays a role in the size of the infarct and stroke. It plays a role in the, the intraocular pressure with glaucoma, neural degeneration. It dilates blood vessels to increase blood flow and deliver more oxygen and nutrients to tissues. It plays a role in pulmonary hypertension. Premature babies have lungs that don't have enough blood vessels developed, and therefore the blood pressure in the lungs is elevated. They are hypoxic blue babies. They often die within several weeks. And by inhaling low concentrations of nitric oxide, we can permit the blood vessels in the lungs to develop in the, paper, in the, pa the pre preliminary early premature babies will now survive. There are nerves that release nitric oxide as its neurotransmitter in the brain, but also the nerves in the penis. They release nitric oxide. The nitric oxide increases cyclic GMP production in the blood vessels of the penis. The blood vessels dilate, fill with blood, and that's how one develops an erection, and that's how Viagra was discovered. As an agent that enhances the activity of nitric oxide to produce cyclic GMP. It plays a role in wound healing. It plays a role in atherogenesis. It participates in inflammation in a variety of disorders. It also can be cytotoxic. It can kill cells. And we're now doing studies in tumors where nitric oxide and cyclic GMP are playing important roles in angiogenesis to nourish those tumors and to also prevent their proliferation and treatment. These are some of the process, clinical processes where nitric oxide plays a role. Tissue transplantation, septic shock. There are bacteria that produce endotoxins that activate one of the isoforms of nitric oxide synthase to make too much NO, dilating the blood vessels, lowering the blood pressure. It inhibits platelet aggregation. It influences gastrointestinal motility. There are bacteria that release agents that activate the enzyme in the intestine to cause diarrhea. It plays a role in secretion of a variety of hormones. Increased formation of nitric oxide in the pancreatic islets enhances the secretion of insulin in ways to treat diabetes. It regulates the expression of various genes. It plays a role in hemoglobin delivery to tissues. In stem cells and cancer, it can influence the differentiation of those cells in the proliferation. We are now doing studies to see if we can't manipulate cyclic GMP and nitric oxide production in cancers as a new approach for therapy. I want to thank you for the opportunity to discuss our interest in our work with nitric oxide. Thank you very much. Shay Shay.